Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast. Today, we are joined by Roger Martin. He is a head honcho at Thrive More, and that's what I want to do. I want to thrive, Roger. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So why don't we start off with, uh, why don't you define what Thrive means? Yep. So, well, Thrive More Brands is our umbrella company that underneath we we sit our health and wellness businesses. So we have uh, a, a boxing for fitness, group fitness uh, franchise, about 60 locations. We have uh, an infrared sauna concept, which is um, a pr infrared sauna studios where you have a private room uh, and there are eight different rooms where you can go in to do a, a private infrared sauna session. And that's a franchise and uh, we're building like 60 this year of those. And uh, then we have a, a nutritional company along with uh, an outbound sales company that helps our franchises grow membership and, and do their pre-launches. Uh, and so that's under the banner of Thrive More. I coincidentally have a, a podcast like you called the Thrive More Podcast with Roger Martin. But I think the word thrive to me, thrive means that you are excelling. You're taking mm. your God-given gifts and you're applying those so that you don't live a good life. You live an exceptional life. You're thriving. And so many people today, I think they settle for surviving, right? Uh, sustaining. And, and, you know, we, we are meant to thrive. We, you know, we have amazing brains and we have these unbelievable bodies and we should be thriving. And so just really put that umbrella over all of our brands. And, you know, it's just a concept that I, I, I believe in a hundred percent in life that, that we're, you know, we're here for a, a, a good time, but not a long time. So let's make the most of it. Yeah, because quite literally, I just got off uh, stage doing a presentation, and one of the things that's parting notes was, you know, one of there was a young uh, father in the room, and he's got like the six-year-old uh, uh, son, and it's like, uh, uh, when we are babies, we are magnificent, and somewhere along the journey, we lose that uh, God-given right that we have to thrive, and we think we have to settle, mm. or we're less than. And that uh, brings me to, you know, you're in the franchise business and you've got this amazing concept. Let's pick uh, Rockbox. Mm -hmm. And you've got somebody who says, you know, I want to have one of these things, but they bring their psychology to the party, not just their hopes and dreams. So how do you balance that? You can mm -hmm. have someone that actually in their heart believes that they are destined to thrive no matter what happens, they're going to succeed. And other people... The world is out to get me, even though they may have a veneer of, I'm doing okay. Yeah. What you just described is victim mentality, right? Victimhood. And I let off our last summit. So we bring together all of our franchisees from all over the nation to in, into a summit every year. And I let off my my initial speech to to you know a couple hundred people on the fact that victim mentality is not allowed in our culture. It is ostracized in our culture, and we don't, we, we will not support it because I've seen too many people in this world, as I'm sure you have too. Everything is somebody else's fault, and they're not taking responsibility for themselves. And as, as a CEO of, of multiple brands, you know, my one of my favorite sayings is it, it may not be my fault, but it's my responsibility. Right. Maybe it's maybe not my fault, but it's my responsibility. And if people will, start to and, and even and i say this to our franchise prospects like we have franchisee prospects we're going to have um within three days three days from now we'll have seven or eight different uh, groups come in uh, to decide if they want to be part of our uh, part of our, our business and i tell them straight up you know this is hard entrepreneurship is hard um it is going to get harder before it gets easier it always is that way and there'll be ups and downs but it's incredibly rewarding if you stick to it and you and you push through but you have to own it. You have to take responsibility for your actions. And even though we're going to give you all the support that a franchise offers, and, and we do way more than the average franchisor does from a support uh, perspective, but even with all that, you've got to be the person that owns that business and drives sales and drives memberships, retains those members, and ascends those members to a higher level, higher level of spend. You can't... Go ahead. No, no, uh, that's like uh, absolutely, and it, uh, we're going to talk about sales in a little while. Yeah, but uh, very much, uh, it's so easy, especially the smarter you are, is to go, yeah, Roger, but you know, I could do it better. 
And so how do you get people to just go, this is a proven methodology. Just follow it as it was intended with the right mindset and you're going to be successful. As soon as you start changing it or uh, doing these activities that are really comfortable for you and not doing the others, that there's going to be problems. So I'm sure you kind of mentioned that along the journey, but how do you really instill it in them that we want you to succeed? This is a formula for success. Uh, don't get in the way of your own success. Yeah. We're very deliberate uh, uh, during initial training to say no genius attacks the first six months. <laughs> so this, this play, this program, this, this system, you know, they bought a system is it works and it works the way that, that we prescribe it. And so run this system, run this business operational system. If in six months after you've launched and you're running your business, you have a great idea because we may not have thought about it. It may be a, yeah. a, a, a fantastic idea. Then here's the proper way to run that up the chan the channels and, and we'll immediately get back to you. And, and, and if you want to then formally test it in your location, uh, we may test it in a, a couple of our affiliate owned locations, which is basically either my money in my store, yeah. or my partner's money in her store. And we will, you know, we'll test that. And if it works, then we'll roll it out to the system. But usually people, I don't know how else to say this, but they'll they'll literally break their own business trying to find the best way when you have a great way to do something. A good business, a great business is a little bit boring because it's very predictable. Yeah. And sometimes that predictability makes people think that, oh, I'm missing out. There's more. I could, you know, and there there could be, there could be. But more often than not, we find when you start to do crazy things and crazy ideas, you're not going to be successful. I just wanted to talk to you. like. Uh, actually, I'm on a live podcast streaming live right now. Really? So I'll talk okay. to you later. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Roger. I mean, <laughs> that's just the beauty of doing something live. So I'm at this no event worries. where I just got off the stage. They gave me a conference room for this. And so, yeah, so absolutely. It's good to be loved by your fans. Yeah, you got to love it, man. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So in society, we are uh, very much trained that, uh, uh, Roger, it's not my fault. Uh, it must be the economy, the this, the that. And so part of your job, I would suspect, as a as a franchisor is trying to keep people in the right headspace because it is a tough thing. Entrepreneurship is, is uh, like you keep, there's a lyric from a song called, you know, keep on kicking at the darkness till it bleeds daylight, which is so visceral, but pretty much you keep on, you need to keep on going till you reach that level of success or so much success comes in that that causes problems as well, but you got to keep on going. But without the right mindset, that's tough to do. So how do you instill that? So you got the business processes, but how do you get people to have that self-care and that right mental attitude? Mm. Uh, a lot of coaching, um, a lot of phone calls, a lot of Zoom calls, and we get out in the field a lot. Um, put a lot of put, put, put a lot of miles on on uh, the odometer, so to speak, uh, flying or, or driving or traveling to, to see our franchisees because Again, it's there. We're human beings, and because we're mm. human beings, means that we're going to have good days and we're going to have bad days. And you know, we want to continually coach up our franchisees, who honestly then have to coach up their staff. Yeah. You know, their general manager, their head trainer. If we're talking about Rock Box Fitness, then their their trainers, um, their front desk staff, um, and even their members. Their members, you know, who may be having a tough day. So it it all starts. You know, leadership starts at the top. We all know that. That's a cliche, but it's true. Leadership starts at the top because. You, you know, he or she, the leader, sets the tone for the rest of the organization, and the rest of the organization will most often mimic what the leader is doing. Hmm. We all want leaders. I mean, Lord knows in this country we need some better leaders, right? I don't care which side of the aisle you're on. We need some better leaders, and we all want leaders. We want to be led if it's in the right direction, and it's by a positive human being who sees the potential in us or our country or our business, whatever it is. But it does start at the top and that, that mental health that you talked about, the self-care, you know, that's, that's around a mindset and it's not, it's not an event. It, it's a journey. Like you have to continually go back there and check in and help and coach through and, and give, 
you know, concrete examples of how you've experienced the same thing. And here's what, you know, here's what I did to, to get through that. I think a lot of people, and you know, this. a lot of people love to give their opinions, mm. but we know what opinions are like. Right. And, and so we, a lot of people like to give their opinions versus just share your experience, just share your experience. And me as the recipient, I'll take from your experience on how I'm going to apply that to, to my business or my life or whatever it may be. Too many people want to share their opinions and that's great. But if you haven't really been there, done that, your opinion's not going to be heavily weighed. Absolutely. Uh, so one of the, one of the things that, uh, uh, I find to be true is that, uh, people typically have three faces that they have. They've got this face. They show the outside world. Either look at me. I'm pretty, I'm amazing. I'm smart. I'm intelligent or, I'm a victim, people are out to get me, whatever that illusion that you show. The second one is a delusion of who we think we are. Like for example, I think I'm a lot funnier than I actually am. Uh, and then we've got that third space, which is the authentic self, who we are. Yeah. And so, Ake, how does that, uh, that statement that we have th three faces, uh, how does that jive with your world? Uh, does it make sense, not make sense? uh to you roger yeah and uh, let's go right back to the beginning where you said you know how would you define thriving thriving is when your authentic self is who you show up as to it that's true that yeah that's that's when you are truly an authentic person and a, living an authentic genuine life is and with your flaws right with your idiosyncrasies everything you show up every day as your authentic self to me that's thriving uh, and you're always continuing to try to be one percent better and improve day after day after day and learn and continually learn but it's it's yeah thriving to me is just man drop the facade turn off the instagram filter and just be who you are and you know i'll, I'll share with you a, you know a couple of my 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 business heroes if you will mm. Um, and I grew up in corporate America. So remember, I was an entrepreneur from 2017 till now. Uh, and, you know, I hope for the rest of my life because I love this. Um, but I spent 25 years in the pharmaceutical business, which is a very buttoned up regulated industry, you know, mm -hmm. all, all about hierarchy and bigger offices and corner offices and all that crap. And, and I, I grew up in that. And my hero, really, from a business perspective, is Dana White, who is the, the president of the UFC, of, of the oh, Ultimate yeah. Championship. Brilliant guy. Because that guy. guy yeah. Brilliant, right? But does it in his own authentic way? Like he doesn't have a filter. He doesn't. And I'm not saying you have to swear, even though I, I do swear a lot. But let's you know, I'm not saying you have to swear everywhere, and you have to you know be quite as caustic as he can be. But talk about a guy that's like, I'm going to do it my way, this way. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to work my tail out. I'm going to work endless hours, whatever it takes. I'm going to build something that never existed before at this level. But I'm doing it in my authentic voice. Like, I love that. And I think, you know, you're seeing the same thing with Elon Musk. And yes, it gets these guys into trouble sometimes, but I'll take that. I'll take the backlash to be my authentic self and to live the life that I feel I was destined to live, to thrive versus having this BS facade of what I'm trying to hope people think I am. Absolutely. Because there's so much uh, mental horsepower used to maintain the facade. And not only the one for others, but the facade we uh, have uh, for ourselves. And when we actually, so here's my prescription to most people is like, uh, uncover your purpose in life so you know where you're heading. Figure out who you truly are in terms of values and the criteria our mind uses. And that gives you the foundation that you need. And then you can build something amazing along that journey. And every ounce of your being is focused towards that. Whereas when you go, oh, I want people to perceive me as this, and that's not authentic. It's not in a foundation that is just, uh, can you be successful that way? Absolutely. But it's so much easier when you can just be you and execute in that way. And that way, people that love you, love you for who you are, as opposed to who you're pretending to be. I, yeah, you, you said, can you be successful that way? I, maybe in the short term, but man, I, it's, it's a lie that you're talking about. Like you're speaking about carrying this lie and we all, we all have these little lies we carry, but, but you know, when you're not being your true authentic self to carry the weight of that 
lie of the weight of keeping that up of keeping up that appearance at some point that breaks your back at some point yeah and i uh, mean i if there's if the listeners can get any benefit from this i would say start living your authentic life yes you're going to lose some friends they weren't your real friends to begin with you know yes you're going to have some family members that will root against you it's sad mm. but true but live your authentic life because you'll find your tribe they will find you actually the crazy thing is they will find you it's just the way yeah. the universe works yeah, but but you got to be your authentic self and so i'll just kind of uh, tweak something that you said uh, yeah. uh that you know you can't truly be successful in uh, if you're living that lie or doing something that isn't in alignment but uh, what i find is that uh you can be successful but you're not going to be happy and you're going to be unsatisfied you and i both know a ton of people that uh Basically, uh, there's a song from the Talking Heads. This is not my beautiful wife. This is not my beautiful house. Like, how did, how did I get here? And they get that crisis of uh, trying to redefine themselves. And I think if we can help people, help them find their authentic selves, then it just makes life so much easier. And you also become that amazing role model for your kids because mm -hmm. you're walking your talk. And I think that's what great leaders do is even if you're flawed, you're authentically you. And yep. uh, so let's kind of, so how do you balance uh, right now? Uh, you've got three franchisees. They're all under the one umbrella, but uh, the people that come to, let's say uh, rock box versus uh, the infrared business, are they different uh, creatures that come to that or are they similar people just being attracted to one thing versus another? Yeah, um, very similar avatar, very similar avatar because it's a person who is inf interested in self-care mm. in improving their fitness, uh, which with fitness comes confidence. Um, people always say, you know, you have to have a strong mind and a strong body. And I'm I'm of the belief if you have a strong body, you will have a strong mind because it, your body will never will never lie to you. It will always tell you how it feels, what you're doing right, True what that. you're doing wrong. Yeah. And, and and so our avatar for the different franchises that, that, that we have, the different brands, um, <laughs> is really that more higher end, somebody that's willing to invest a couple hundred bucks a month into their fitness or into their self-care, their their uh, recovery, which the infrared sauna and red light therapy that we offer separately at Beam Light Sauna offers a, a recovery aspect. Yes. People that are willing to do that usually because they're still spending on a different shares of their wallet, right? Recovery is a different share than fitness, just like groceries and just like car payment are different shares of the wallet. Um, and so we want to get as much share of wallet as we can that adds value to the customer, to that person. So that same person may go work out at Rockbox at 530 at night and then drive directly over or walk over to a, to a beam light sauna location and do a 40 minute infrared sauna session to recover, to relieve the soreness, flush out the toxins. Same person oh, because, because they're interested in their whole, whole body, if you will. Superb. And I'll just add one thing to you thing which you probably just, it was unsaid, but I find that, you know, mind, body, spirit is uh, part of one system. And if you're suffering from a spiritual uh, anxiety, a good workout will do wonders. It's, if you are not feeling like a workout, a good mindset will kind of get you to go take that walk. So the, if you if you can impact any one of those three, you impact the other two. And I think uh, that's sure. uh, sometimes we lose focus of that. Yep. So, Roger, you know, you have this amazing business, but you also hit these roadblocks. Can you share with us, uh, you know, one of those areas where you were like, what the hell am I doing here? Uh, and it might have been in this new life as an entrepreneur or maybe in corporate America or earlier on, can you share one of those moments where you kind of hit those crossroads where you start doubting and a, what was going on and B, what did you do to overcome that to get back on the path that you wanted to be on? Yeah. Um, man, we, we only have a few minutes, so that's, uh, I could tell you 5,000 things that have happened as an yeah. entrepreneur because it is a, a rocky road. Um, but again, still incredibly rewarding and I love it. I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change anything about it. Every, every, you know, trial and tribulation makes you a better person. Um, but there were certainly times when I, when I started Rockbox after leaving corporate America. So remember I was in a C-suite, I was a chief operating officer, great, great, great salary and stock options and benefits and everything you can imagine. And I walked away from all that. So on a Monday, you know, I, I did a succession plan and made sure I finished impeccably. But on a Monday I woke up, no salary, no health insurance, no car, no company car, 
you know, no, no stock options, all that I was gone. And, and, and then like two days later, I'm building the first flagship rock box with my business partner that, that had mm-hmm. had two other boxing for fitness studios, but we renamed them and, and rebranded everything when we did rock box. And when we're building the studio, we did some of the stuff on our own just to save some money. We don't do that anymore. We have contractors do it all, but, but, uh, we were literally shoving just real quickly. We were shoving these steel girders up into the rafters of this this uh, commercial space that we had rented, and uh, so that we could hang the chain for the boxing mm-hmm. bags because um, it's it's boxing, and then the other half is uh, functional fitness, like a like a boot camp. And as I'm on the ground, we have these two little scaffoldings, and there's a guy on top. My partner's on top. There's a, a guy in the middle that still works for us, and then I'm on the bottom shoving this 400 pound steel girder up, you know, mm-hmm. at an angle so we'd go. And as it, as I finally have to let go of it, uh, Umar, as I let go of it, you know, cause, cause they had to keep going up into the ceiling. I'm kind of looking at the butt end of it. I'm thinking if they let that go, I'm dead. I'm that's coming right back through my skull. And, yeah. and I, then all I could think of was what the hell am I doing here? Three days ago, I had a job and a salary that people would kill for, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I had the life of luxury. It was not that hard. Cause I, you know, mastered the job. What the hell am I doing here getting filthy, dirty, putting steel up in a ceiling? But that's all part of the journey. I wouldn't trade that, you know, at, at all. And then there were other, you know, d- building that whole thing. I mean, it brought me to my knees. I mean, to my knees. The, and, and then trying to find, you know, crack the code on membership sales and crack the code on doing a good, successful pre-launch so that when we open new studios, new franchises, they would open successfully with cash flow um, at every Without time. Injuries. What's that now? Without, yeah, without injuries. Exactly. All right, Roger, exactly. I'm going to let you go because I know you got another appointment. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, I've got your mobile number. I'm going to reach out, send you a message. Good luck on yeah. the next podcast and uh, look forward to seeing one of those things in Toronto, Canada. I love it. I love it, man. Thank you so much. Have Cheers. a great day. See you.